Hi guys, David with the First Place Auto Parts here in the studio. Thanks for joining me today. We get a lot of questions at First Place Auto Parts about what brake fluid is right for my car or my project. And it's a good question, especially when it comes time to installing a disc brake conversion kit on your car like I did on my 56 Chevrolet Gasser recently. Anytime you break open the brake system, whether it's to replace a master cylinder, brake lines, or calipers, you're going to have to bleed the brakes. When you bleed the brakes, you're going to have to buy some brake fluid to replenish what you've lost. So this conversation in this video is going to be helpful in identifying what the differences are between the different levels of brake fluid and which one is right for your project. The Department of Transportation ranks brake fluid in classifications. The DOT part on the label stands for the Department of Transportation. Dot 3 and Dot 4 brake fluid is amber in color, kind of like your favorite light beer, and by nature is what science likes to call hydroscopic. You and I will just say that it likes to absorb water from the air, which ultimately is going to affect its boiling point. To understand brake fluid, we first need to talk about your brake system, which is a hydraulic system. And being a hydraulic system, it uses fluid that is not compressible to activate something. The second thing you really need to know is that the caps on your master cylinder, they're open to the atmosphere. What it's doing is drawing in atmospheric air, which will have moisture in it. When moisture gets in your brake fluid, what it does when it gets up to operating temperature or beyond is it turns into a vapor. When you have a vapor, and it, it turns the fluid into a compressible fluid. And that's where you get your spongy brake pedal. But perhaps the most important factor with brake fluid that has to determine with its rating is its boiling point. Now boiling point with brake fluid is stated as both wet and dry. A dry boiling point is fresh brake fluid. It's not absorbed any water from the air. It's right out of the container. It's not contaminated at all. The wet boiling point, however, is once the fluid's been in the master cylinder for a while and it's absorbed some water. Now what's interesting for me was to find out that brake fluid is considered to be contaminated or less than effective or less efficient when it has 3.7% water to brake fluid content. So when you only have 3.7% of your total volume is water inside your master cylinder your brake lines, it's considered that the brake fluid at that point is compromised and needs to be flushed. And the worst part about this is this all takes place when you're working your brakes at their hardest. When you need them the most is when, when you have water in your brake fluid, it's apt to vaporize the water that's in that brake fluid and actually make your braking worse. It's also where we get the term brake fade. The three main types of brake fluid that we're going to take a look at today and really the ones that you'll be concerned with is dot three, dot four, and dot five. DOT 3 brake fluid has been around for a long time. As a matter of fact, it was used in vehicles all the way up to the mid-90s. DOT 3 brake fluid has a dry boiling point of 401 degrees, where the wet boiling point is 284 degrees, which shows just how much brake fluid is affected by any kind of water that starts to accumulate in it. DOT 4 brake fluid is similar construction being a glycol-based brake fluid, but it has a higher boiling point than DOT 3. The dry boiling point is 446 degrees, when the wet boiling point is 311 degrees. Still it degrades, but not nearly as much as DOT 3. And then finally we have DOT 5, and DOT 5 is something that's altogether different. It is a silicone based brake fluid, as opposed to the glycol based of DOT 3 and DOT 4. DOT 5 has a 500 degree dry boiling point, which is very high, much higher than the other two, and a 356 degree wet boiling point, which is still higher than the other two. It's a great high performance application. The one thing about silicone, it's a little more compressible than glycol is, therefore the spongy pedal that you get with DOT5, it does have a little bit softer pedal. Even when everything's done perfectly and you let the brakes, there's no air, it will have a little bit softer pedal, but it will be a consistent pedal no matter how hard you push those brakes. So it is interesting that most modern cars, your new cars, use the DOT5 brake fluid. Modern rotors are much thinner and don't dissipate heat as well as the old thick vented rotors used to do. So DOT5 is required or necessary with the heavier vehicles that we have today that also have a little bit less efficient braking systems and need those higher boiling points. Each of the brake fluid classifications have their place and purpose. Make sure you use the right one for your application. 
Consult your owner's manual if you have one for your car, and if not, either call the manufacturer or if you bought the brakes from us, call us at First Place Auto Parts and we'll help steer you to the right brake flow that you need for your disc brake conversion kit. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video today. I really appreciate it. If you found this video helpful or beneficial, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel where we'll continually be adding how to install videos, but also take a look at some new product review videos that just might be helpful when it comes time to either buying parts for your car or putting them on. Until next time, keep the hammer down, keep it between the guardrails.